Hello everybody, Backyard Bullion here and a very warm welcome to you all joining us at my silver pouring bench for today's making of compilation video of a silver chess set. Now we have already done one chess set and it's winged its way off to its new owner, but we have had a commission for a second set and I didn't make a making of video for the first set, so I thought it would be a good idea to do so for the second one. So today we're going to show the pouring of some of these pieces and then everything that we do as an afterthought. It's not just about pouring the silver, it's about the care and attention that we put into it, sanding the bases, making sure they're all as flat as can be, doing the stamping of the weights, the assay testing, what we do for that. Then of course the staining at the final step to make black versus white. There's a whole load of different steps that we take and I thought it'd be very interesting to share those with you all here. So we're going to pour some pieces first and uh, it's a really cool mold to showcase. And I do want to give a shout out to GNG Machine Works who made the mold for us. And I know they took a lot of time and energy to actually work out how best to do it. And the 3D design part of it was a very long and lengthy process. So a big thank you to them. I'll try and remember to put a link down in the description to uh, their website, GNG Machine Works. If I've forgotten somebody, please remind me, but they did a fantastic job. So if you want a custom made mold, go and check them out. So it's a two part mold that you just put together like this. They've got these little uh, nobbles there and holes here that hold it together very well. But what we do to ensure that there is no potential slippage is use some C-clamps just to very, very carefully. You don't want to press too hard on the C-clamps, of course, and potentially break your graphite. But we use some C-clamps there to hold it together, one at either end when we pour them. So first step is to pour them in and uh, we don't pour all of them at once it's just not particularly practical with the volume of silver that we have and also because we've only got one pawn um, mold cavity if you're pouring a chest set which is 16 pieces really you need to go pawn plus one every time otherwise you'll end up you know, you pour all of them, all six at once, and then you'll have to pour the pawn after pawn after pawn and reset the mold time after time after time. So we do one and one. Uh, today we're going to be doing the uh, the rook and a pawn. I hope we'll have enough silver in the uh, crucible. Usually it's just about enough and uh, that's what we do. So it's the opposite ends of the mold as well, which is always a little bit complicated because I like to have the heat going onto the cavity with the blowtorch, but we'll talk about that once we've got everything heated up. The silver is coming up to temperature, so the next step for me is to make sure everything is set up and ready to go, and then we will be pouring a pawn and a rook. So as the silver is now starting to get up to temperature, I did want to talk a little bit about the mold, and one of the most important things you can do, I can't emphasize quite how important this is, preheating molds. Now you'll be able to see on this mold over here, as I put the blowtorch on it, it's starting to change color. Uh, and that color change is actually moisture. Now, if I pick that up, don't worry, it's only been on there for a few seconds, so it's not very hot. That moisture is showing through quite a lot and you can burn that off very easily, very quickly. A little bit of silver still in there. You can burn that off very quickly and very easily, but if you don't and you pour molten silver at a thousand plus degrees in there, it's gonna do a little thing called a steam explosion. All of that moisture is going to very quickly evaporate and you're gonna get a little pop and explosion of molten silver, which is of course not a good thing at all. So you can see after a few seconds of having that heat on there, you can see the moisture is being eliminated and that color change is leaving the mold, which is, as I said, it's the most important thing that you can do. So I'm going to preheat all of the bits of the mold that we, well in fact all of the mold that we're going to do because even, even down here on the queen bit there's going to be some moisture in there which could seep through when you superheat the graphite mold pouring the silver into it. So I'm going to preheat everything as best as I can and then we'll be back to pour the silver in there with hopefully no steam explosions. Okay, so the silver is basically up to temperature. All I'm going to do now is just a last little bit of preheating. I like to get the flame right down into that cavity to really superheat the mold. Not only is it important for eliminating moisture, but also the hotter the mold, the better the silver flows into it and can take the design that's actually in the mold itself. So it's kind of a two-purpose thing to preheat your molds. You don't necessarily have to get them glowing hot though. I have seen a few people getting molds to a glowing hot temperature. It's my experience not needed. For certain designs, perhaps very intricate ones, yeah, it can be important, but getting a mold glowing hot will actually degrade the mold quite quickly. So 
just using a little butane blowtorch like this seems to work for me. So we are going to be pouring both ends of this mold, which is always a little bit awkward. So what I'm going to do is just very quickly get some heat going into this one here. Uh, and then we are pretty much ready to go. As I said, we're doing a rook and a pawn. It's a little bit awkward at both ends, but we shall endeavor and hopefully get some good pieces working just fine. So I like to have the flame on the opening just to aid the entire process. Although I do want to turn the flame down a little bit because the force of that, I don't want it to blow the molten silver into funky patterns. I'd rather it just be uh, as smooth as possible because we're going to be sanding down what we get to a nice flat surface. So we don't want it to be all sort of knobbled and textured. So here we go, let's pour some silver. All right, there we go. Oh, that one's got an interesting little bubble. Now we're not gonna get that to the end. I'm just gonna pour that into the castle. So we've got an interesting thing that's happened with the pawn here. We had a little air pocket right at the very end. And that is certainly not going to yield a nice flat surface. So what we are probably going to do is pop the pawn back into the furnace because it's already hot silver and we are going to remelt it and we'll try again. So you see it's not always perfect. Oh no that was the that was the rook side. I do beg your pardon. So the rook was not quite perfect but the pawn was which is good as I am running a little behind on my pawn schedule. Sorry about that, there was an inopportune battery failure moment, uh, but we have got a pawn out of that first cycle, which is always nice to have something at least. The rook had that little air pocket at the uh, the base, which sometimes happens when you do the first pour into a mold of a day. You haven't maybe eliminated all of the dust particles that are in there, and sometimes that can cause a little bit of bubbling. So we'll try the rook again, but the pawn is done. Uh, so I'll reset the mold and we'll be back momentarily to pour another rook and another pawn. Okay, so we're ready to go again with the rook and the pawn. Let's see if we can get something without an air pocket this time on the rook. Be good to get a good rook for this video. Perfect. And then we've got the pawn at this end. Another perfect one, excellent. So that is that cycle done. We'll leave that there to one side. Let's just move my other pawn that I've already done out of the way, turn the blowtorch off. It's really weird, like you can hear the crackling. I don't know if the camera's quite picking that up, but um, you can hear crackling of the mold, because of course as silver cools, it expands just a little bit. So you can hear the kind of cracking almost of the graphite as the silver expands as it cools inside the mold, which I always like. It's kind of cool. It doesn't do any damage to the mold or anything, but I think it's quite an interesting thing to hear. So let's see if they've filled the cavities nicely. And by the looks of it, we are all good to go. So we have the rook. You'll notice they come out of the mold really quite easily, although the pawns are a little bit more difficult. You have to kind of flip them out from the base. So. There we have a rook and a pawn. Now I'm just going to go and very quickly quench them and then we'll be right back to have a quick look. So here we have the final results of the second pour and we have got everything just right. And what I always really like to see is the difference you get with having the blowtorch on the silver as it cools to not. There's really incredibly cool kind of patterns formed on the one without the blowtorch. Uh, like striations within the silver and these kind of like almost crystalline features which have been formed as it cooled as opposed to the ripples here. And for this particular set it doesn't really make much of a difference because we're going to be sanding down these bases anyway. Um, but it's always interesting to kind of see the, uh, the difference there. So really nice uh, pieces to come out. Now you can see that there's one little a uh, little bit of kind of leak, oh, I say leakage, seepage on the seam area there. That's fine. We'll 
cut that off very easily and quickly. Uh, the rook has come out with just a tiny little bit on the top there, but otherwise really nice around the edges, no seam leakage. So that's some jobs well done on those pieces. Really happy with the way they've turned out. So the next step is gonna be uh, showcasing the sanding of the bases, which is always a really interesting part. A big thank you to you all for watching, especially to my BYB Rambling Society members, paid or not. If you've watched to this point of the video, let me know if you're a rambler. Have a good one, see you on the next video. As always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.